Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I'm going to show you today how to make a 4060 last. I'm not going to go through the complete build of it, but I'm going to show you some of the problems that the 4060s have and the ways to resolve it. So I'm going to tear this apart and when I get in here, I'll show you what to look at and what to get rid of. Now that we've got the battery situated, yes, I am using the right socket. Somebody used a Torx on there previously, so it is a little messed up, but yes, a 50 plus bit is what I am using. So yes, I do know what I'm doing, kind of. been much of a core. It looks pretty clean on the inside, so let's see what's going on. Well, for a core, it wasn't a burnout core as you can see. Most common problem is 3-4, and they are in pretty good shape. But to make a 4 60 that's going to last, this is the trash. We don't need that anymore. We will be upgrading the output shaft to a heavy duty build it output shaft, but I do need the, the uh, transmission input yoke seal to be, and I need the reluctor ring so I can put it all on the new output shaft. Alright, so what I'm going to show you guys here is everything started looking good until we got a little bit deeper. And if you can see down in there, looks like we got a little boo-boo. So, I'm going to hope this comes apart and it didn't beat up the case too bad and we still have a buildable case because we are rebuilding a lot of this. So, let's get that out of there and see, make sure this case is savable. So, the lower spec did come apart. <clears throat> We are replacing the lower planetary, so, but they didn't get damaged, but you can see here that we did blow the sprag apart, so <clears throat> we will be replacing the lower sprag. It does look like somebody's been in here before, but they didn't do a very good upgrade. All the pistons, or this piston at least, is still plastic. That is one that I change on on every one because they crack. Alright, so before I get this thing put together, I kind of want to go over what we did. We replaced the Sonex input drum. And I want to go over some of the benefits because we all know 4L60s, they are junk. So pretty much you got to take everything out of the 4L60, throw it away. I know I said this at the beginning of the video, but I'm going to go over it a little bit more in detail now. So here's the stock drum. You notice that it uses a snap ring right here to put or to keep your clutches in, your third and fourth clutches. Problem with that is they was called ring blowout. What happens is the ring will flex. When the clutches are applied, it'll make your clutches cone. With having that backing plate on there, it keeps it from coning and your clutches are gonna last a lot longer. The next benefit of the Sonex input drum is when they machined it and put the, the pressure plate on the top, there's actually more room to stack your clutches in there. So make sure when you put these together that your clutch stack is right. So this will hold a lot more clutches. The setting, the clearance setup is on this is between 50 and 60 thousandths. Make sure also when you're assembling this, you use molded steel piston, um, <clears throat> molded steel pistons instead of the aluminum. So that is another thing to watch out for. But these are really nice drums. Hopefully to help it along with all the other Sonex uh, upgrades we got. Another thing we did get is the Sonex Smart Shell. It is similar to the B Shell but it comes with bearings instead of using a brass shim. All right, I just want to show you guys the differences in these two drums. You can see this is the stock drum. You can see how thin that lip is right there. Compared to the new Sonex, it's a lot thicker. On the beast drums, you used to have to come in here and grind these cogs off right here, which was very time consuming. I didn't really like doing it. But the new Sonexes, they already come pre-machined so it makes it a whole lot simpler. Remember, time is money. 
Another big upgrade we're doing is four pin to five pin planetaries. These are great. You can get Sonex, Sonex, Sonex aftermarket uh, planetaries, but we're, we're using GM. I really like the GM stuff. It's a little bit less expensive as the Sonex, but it works just as good. Next thing we're also doing to this transmission is replacing the stock output shaft with the Sonex heavy duty output shaft. I've seen a lot of people with sticky tires, you know, trying to leave with the stall converter and shatter output shafts. That'll cause re that'll cause a lot of damage as well. So we are going with the Sonex heavy duty output shaft. Trust me, the money you're gonna spend on this will save you in the long run. Same thing with the input shaft and drum. It's mandatory to get a good, reliable 4L60. All right, guys, thanks for watching the 4L60 video. I know I didn't get into a whole lot of detail about building the 4L60 or you know the specs or anything like that. I just kind of wanted to make a video of some of the parts that we use on a mildly built, mildly built uh, engine or you know some kind of power adders. The parts that we put in the 4L60 to make them last. So kind of to recap that, I'll start with the back here. We use the Sonex HD output shaft. Um, we use five pin planetaries. We use double cage sprags. We did the Sonex smart shell. Um, we did the Sonex input drum, which I went over that a little bit earlier in the video of the reasons those are so much better. With the HD input shaft, we use a Corvette servo with a Sonex billet 3.4. Um, new harness, new solenoids. The valve body, we use the Sonex shift uh, improvement kit or the, the performance kit. Um, it comes with the pinless accumulators and shift valves. We use a 2.3 heavy duty shift valve. Checked all of our ports or all of our valves to make sure you know they weren't worn. If we did, we would have we would have bored the valve body and went with an oversized valve. Um, <clears throat> just used a Summit aluminum stump pan. Um, turned out real good. So that's what we did with the 4L60. And if you guys need any of the parts or want to know the parts we used or some of the tools like the spring compressor and the seal resizers stuff like that i will leave a link below in the description where you can get those parts um, and like i said the tools that i use they are not name brand they're cheap they work perfect save you some money on those tools and buy you some better parts for your transmission if you want to attempt this yourself um, there's a lot of videos out there with guys explaining how to build the 4l60 a lot better than i can explain it so you know if you need to learn how to build 4l60 there's a lot of videos out there Always do your research and enjoy, have fun. So over here is our next project. This is gonna be for our LT62 engine. Um, for the 67C10, we'll introduce that truck here in the next couple of videos. Uh, we're gonna be doing pretty much a whole uh, body off, frame restoration, air ride, custom front suspension with rack and pinion that we're gonna build on the CNC table it's going to be an awesome truck so stay tuned for that but this kit right here for the lt62 is the texas speed drop-in kit so what this is is a kit you don't need to balance the rotating assembly to put it together they make it all within gm specs so it's a drop-in kit now the lt that we got did have a spun rod bearing so we got a brand new gm crank from texas speed I know I'm saying Texas Speed a lot because, uh, you know, I really like their stuff. This is not a sponsored video. This is all bought by us. These P JE Pistons are really nice. I'm really excited to see how this thing's going to perform. We don't know if we're going to add a torque storm on this or maybe some nitrous. We don't know yet. But Texas Speed HP rods, you know, they got the ARP 2000 bolts in it. Um, Texas Speed was out of their push rods, so they sent me some Manton push rods. They're really nice. Custom ground, custom ground uh, cam, you know, we kind of spec'd it for the truck and what we're going to be doing with it, ARP head bolts, GM main bearings. We're going to be using the Johnson 210R drop-ins, um, really good lifters. I love those lifters. Texas Speed, dual valve springs. We're going to be using the CHE training upgrade kit. And we went with the bushing, not the needle bearing kit. So 
We don't have to worry about those needle bearings coming apart. New guides, uh, mole rod bearings, so pretty much everything we need here to freshen up that 6.2 and get it ready to be put in that truck. I will go over and make a video with the trunnion upgrades, show you guys how I do it. I use this Arbor Press right here. It makes it so easy for putting them in. I'll show you what we do to clean up the rockers before we press those in. Uh, I'll probably make a video with the cam phaser lockout. Uh, I know a lot of people said they've had problems doing those. Uh, they're real simple. You just got to take your time and really pay attention to what you're doing. If you all have any suggestions or anything you might want to see on this video, leave it down in the comments and I'll try to include it in that video for you so you can see it. I'll probably go over file fit in the rings and, you know, making sure to check our gap and, and how we do our equation to make sure our gap is right for boost. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching and uh, hope you come back to see some more videos. And like I said, links for the parts on the 4L60 and the tools that I used, I'll leave down the description. So if you need them, go ahead and click on them and get your parts going. Thanks for watching.